Hello everyone, you're welcome to Mathematics Tour. This is IGCSE Mathematics Paper 3, written in October 2023. There are nine questions in this paper. If you are seeing this channel for the first time, please kindly subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Also, hit the notification bell to receive notification anytime I upload new videos. Also, comment like and share this video let's jump into the first question the bar chart shows the number of goals scored by a team in each of five months in february 12 goals are scored complete the bar chart so what you need to do here is to draw the bar here so you stop at 12 okay so you complete it like this and you draw down so you also need to shade this so to do that you can just start from somewhere here okay take your time to complete this very well So you need to take your time to uh, do this, okay? So once you are done, that will be the bar chart for February. Okay, so you can just finish up this. Okay, for me, I think I can leave it like this because of time. Okay, so let's go to the next question. That is um, Roman figure two. How many more goals are we are scored in January than in October? So in January, we have 17 goals. In October, we have 6 goals. So we can easily say 17 subtract 6. So that will be 11. So 11 more goals were scored in January than in October. Part B, find the range of the number of goals scored. So we have the highest number of goals to be 20 here. And then the list is um, 6. So the range will be the highest minus the lowest or the biggest minus the smallest. That will be 20 minus 6. That will be 14. See Roman figure 1. The team shop is open from 9 o'clock to 17.15 on Monday to Friday only. Work out how long the shop is open each week. Give your answer in hours and minutes. So, um, on a daily basis, uh, we need to get the uh, number of hours the shop opens. Okay, so we need to get, okay, this is hour and this is minute. So, you have 17, 15, then you have 9, 0, 0. So, if you subtract this, so this will give us 15 and this will give us 8. So, that means... Uh, the team shop opens 8 hours, 15 minutes daily. Okay, so weekly will be multiplied by 5 days. So we have 8 hours and 15 minutes here. So you can put the hour and the minute here respectively. So times 5, that's what we want to do. 5 times 15, that is 75. Of course, of course you cannot write any number um, from 60 and above here. So we need to subtract 60 from 75 to make it an hour and then some minutes. So if you subtract 60 from 75, so that will give you one hour, 15 minutes. So we'll write 15 minutes here. So we keep this one hour. So eight times five, that will be 40 hours plus the one hour you kept, that will be 41 hours. So the answer will be 41 hours um, 15 minutes. So let's go to Roman figure 2. Bruno buys a shirt for $36 and a scarf for $12.25. He pays with a $50 note. Work out how much change he receives. Okay. So let's calculate the total money spent. So that will be $36. Um, 0.00 then add 
0.25 okay so you have 25 here this will give you 8 and this will give you 4 so that means the total money spent is 48 dollars uh, 25 cents then we subtract it from um, 50 dollars so you can have 50.00 then subtract 48.25 okay so um you can easily uh, do this so uh, you need to borrow one dollar okay and one dollar is equivalent to 100 cents so you put 100 here okay so you are left with 49 here 100 subtract 25 so that will give you um, 75 cents okay so 49 dollars minus 48 dollars will give you one dollar so our answer is one dollar 75 okay cents okay so you can write 1.75 dollars so let's go to the next uh, question Calculate the cost of 150 adult tickets, 70 children tickets, and 30 senior tickets. So what you need to do here is to uh, multiply these 150 multiplied by 35 for adults plus um, 70 multiplied by 20 for children plus 30 multiplied by 25 for senior so if you do this this will give you seven thousand four hundred dollars seven four zero zero let's go to roman figure two calculate the percentage of these tickets that are senior tickets okay so the number of adults is 150 okay and the number of uh, children is 70, senior is 30, so the total uh, will be 250, okay? So let's write, so adults 150, um, children you have 70, then senior you have 30, so if you add everything together, so total will be equals to 250. So we want to calculate the percentage of this ticket that are senior ticket. So senior ticket is 30 over the total, which is 250, then multiply by a hundred percent. So if you do this, this will give you 0 0.12 multiply by 100 percent, and you can easily press your calculator straight away. So this will give you 12 percent. Let's go to part E. A game starts at 15.00. The team plays for 90 minutes. There is also a break of 15 minutes. Find the time the game ends. Okay. So you have your hour and minute here respectively. So you have 15.00. You have um, um, 90 uh, minutes. And you also have uh, 15 minutes. So 90 minutes is 1 hour, 30 minutes, okay? That is 90 minutes, okay? So we have 15 minutes here. Then let's add everything together, okay? So uh, this and this will give you 45, that is 30 and 15. Then this and this will give you 16. So that means uh, the game ends at 16.45. Let's go to the next question. Question 2. Write down the mathematical name for this polygon. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is pentagon. Roman figure 2. What you have here? This is a trapezium. Roman figure 3, write down the mathematical name for this angle. So if you do something like this, okay, let's trace this up. So this is less than 180 degrees, but it's actually more than 90 degrees. So this will be 
an obtuse angle. In the next question, measure the size of this angle. So what you need to do is to place your protractor here. Then the center of the protractor should be uh, uh, at the middle. That is this junction here. Then you set this very well. Okay. So if you can't from here. Okay. I think I can turn this around. So you can see this uh, clearly. So let's start from this side here. So I want to start from here. Okay. So let's rotate it like this. So zero is here now. Put the center here. Then adjust this a little bit. Okay. So if you start from zero here up to this place, this is 90 here. Okay. And you have 120, 121, 122, 123. So the value of the angle there here is 123. So you have one, two, three degrees. Then the other one here, draw the line of symmetry to this uh, rectangle. So that will give us something like this. Okay. And something like this. Okay. So this is what we have. Although we can adjust this a little bit because it is okay it's fine like this okay so the next question will be question part c a cuboid measures six centimeters by three centimeters by two centimeters work out the volume of the cuboid so the volume will be this by this by this that is 6 by 3 by 2. That will be um, 36 centimeters um, cube. We have 36 here. Draw a net of the cuboid on the 1 centimeter squared grid. One face has been drawn for you. So if you look at it here, so this is what you have here. So I can label this as, let's say you have, this is 6 and then this is three this is three this is six here you can take any dimension that will uh, fit in here so there's no specific one so for me i have three here i have three here i have six here i have six here so i can easily uh draw more up okay so let's draw another dimension here from here it will be this so two let's say three that is one two three then here the same length one two okay we can have two here let's reduce this to two and make this one two to be two okay so let's reduce this to be two here okay good okay so we can have this one here as well so the implication is that we have um two two and this remains six so we can draw another one up that will be three by six so you have from here one two three then the same thing here one two three then we can complete this Okay, so this is another one and this will be three three six so we can come down we need to draw three more because we have three now so this is the base now so if you fold this up this will be the side okay and uh if you fold this this particular one will be the top so this will be the base this will be the uh, okay let's say the base this will be the back okay so this will be the top okay so let's draw the remaining three so i need to draw the front and it must be two by six because this is the back so it will be two by six so let's draw one two yeah so one two and let's complete this 
So this will be 2 by 6. Okay, so and that will be the front. Sorry. So this will be the front. Then we should draw the two sides. So that should be 2 by 3. So from here, let's draw like this. This is 2. Then by 3, we'll come down like this and complete this. So the same thing, 2 by 3. So we are done with this. Okay, so this will be uh, the cell, the left side. Okay, and this will be the right side. Okay, so this is how to draw the net of a cuboid. So let's go to the next question. Write the number 14,097 in figures. So this will be 14,000. And 97 so you have to put 0 and 97 here because you can only have three digits before you can go to thousand so you can write 14,097 no so this will be one two three comma so this is 1497 so at B write down a common multiple of 17 and of 5 Okay, so the common multiple of 17 and 5 will be the product of the two. 17 by 5, that will be 85. Write 0 0.25 as a percentage. So you just have to multiply it by a 100. Okay, and if you do that, you shift the decimal points like this, 1 and 2. So that will give you 25%. So you have 25 here. Then find the value of 7 to the power of 5. So you can input this into your calculator. This will be 16,807. Then 8 to the power of 0. That will be 1. Okay. So part E. Arrange it. Buys some plant and sells 5 um, elevenths of them. He sells 190 plants. Work out how many plants he buys. Okay. So let the plant be X. Okay. Then he sells 5 elevenths of them. That will be uh, 5 elevenths multiplied by X. Okay. And uh, that is equals to 490 plants. So we need to cross multiply. If you do that and divide both sides by 5, so if you cross multiply, you have 5x to be equals to 190 times 11. So to get the value of x, it will be 190 multiplied by 11 divided by 5. And this will give you 418. Factorize completely. So what is common here? So you can factor out 3 and x so you'll be left with 5x squared y then minus 1 so the answer is 3x into 5x squared y minus 1 part g make n the subject of the formula so from here you can easily uh, rearrange so that you have v minus c to be equals to 3n so you can divide both sides by 3 and the value of n will be equals to v minus t everything over 3 then let's go to part h 7 to the power of 15 divided by 7 to the power of s equals to 7 to the power of 9 this is equation of indices so division law is subtract the powers 7 to the power of 15 minus x equals to 7 to the power of 9. So the base can cancel out. So you have 15 minus x to be equals to 9. So 15 minus 9 will be equals to x if you arrange. And x equals to 6. So let's go to the next question. That will be question 4. 
Complete the table of values for y equals to x squared minus 4x minus 2. So you can input this function into your calculator and set the range from minus 2 to 5 and disturb to be 1. And when you hit enter, so you should get the values for this. So this should be 10, this should be 3, okay? And uh, for the last one here, this should be uh, negative 6. So this is what you have there. So on the grid, draw the graph of y equals to s squared minus 4s minus 2 for this given range. So what you need to do is to uh, plot uh, each of these points when x equals to negative 2 y is equals to 10 so you're going to have a point here okay then when x equals to minus 1 so y is equals to 3 so you're going to have another point here somewhere here when x equals to 0 y is equals to negative 2 you have a point here when x equals to 1 y is equals to negative 5 okay when x equals to 1 x equals to negative 5 so you have another point here okay so when x equals to 2 x equals to negative 6 you have another point here so when x equals to 3 y is equals to negative 5 you have another point here when x equals to 4 y is equals to negative 2 and when x equals to 5 y is equals to 3 5 against 3 this will be the point here okay so i'll need to uh, uh draw the curve okay by sketching but for you you can make use of your french curve okay so let me do that and show you the results this is the output when you connect all the points together okay so um part c use your graph to solve the equation this equals to zero so that is we need to draw a line this is equals to y okay and the solution will be at y equals to zero that is where the curve uh, touches the line at y equals to zero so we need to draw a line at y equals to zero so that will be uh, the x axis because at x axis y is always equals to zero so that means the solution will be here and here so if you look at this each line is um, 0 0.1 so this would be 1 2 3 4 5 that is minus um, 0 0.5 and this will be 1 2 3 4 5 that will be 4.5 so I can easily write my answers here. So x will be equals to minus 0 0.5. So for this particular one, and the other one will be x equals to 4.5. So this uh, is the solution to this. So let's go to the next question. That will be question five. Heidi records the color of each of 500 cars crossing a bridge. The pie chart shows some of this information. How many cars are red? So here we have the total to be 500 cars. Okay. So we need to get the uh, sector angles. Okay. That will give us the number of red we have. Okay. So for red, the sector angle is 90 degrees. So we can say... Uh, the sector angle okay for red will be equals to number of red over the total okay so multiply by 360 degrees so the sector angle for red is 90 degrees equals to 
red the number of red is r over 22 which is 500 then multiply by 360 so this will give us 90 will be equals to 360 times r okay over 500 so you can cross multiply now so you have 360 multiplied by r equals to 500 multiplied by 90 so if you divide both sides by 360 okay so this will cancel this and the value of r will be equals to 125 cars so you have it to be 125 cars part b 35 cars are gray show by calculation that the sector angle for gray is 25.2 so we follow the same pattern so the sector angle will be equals to uh, 35 over the total that is 500 then multiply by 360 okay degrees okay if you do this it will give you 25.2 let's go to part c 175 cars are white and 150 cars are black complete the pie chart to show this information okay so to complete the uh, pie chart you have to get the sector angles for uh, white cars and uh, black cars so that will be okay let's start with the white okay for the white the sector angle for white okay to be equals to number of whites okay over the total 500 times 360 degrees so if you do this you're going to get 126 degrees so you do the same thing for black okay the sector angles uh the sector angle for black will be equals to number of black 150 over 500 multiplied by 360 so this will give you 108 degrees okay so then we need to construct these two angles 126 for white 108 for black and that will complete the by uh, chart so we need to pick um the protractor so this is the protractor so let's reduce this a little bit okay so from here you can turn it around there so let's construct 126 degrees the center okay let's enlarge this a little bit okay so the center should be here okay and let me see okay i think i can rotate it like this so that i can have zero from here so you set it very well let's shift this a little bit okay it's at the center then we need to shift this a little bit as well okay so this is zero perfect so we have zero here and the center is at the middle so the first one will be 126 so this is 90 110 126 is somewhere around here so let's put a dot here so that is 126 there so you can easily join these two together from here okay sorry so let's pick this then we can join this point here to the center here to get the angle so that means from here okay we can easily draw like this so this will be for white and it is 126 degrees so of course the remaining one should be for uh black okay and that will be 108 degrees okay so you don't need to uh measure this because it is the last one as everything add up to uh 360 degrees okay so let's go to the next question that should be 5d so find the probability that a car chosen at random is not gray okay so probability that it is not gray will be equals to one minus probability that it is um gray and that will be one minus the gray there is um 35 the number of gray is uh, 35 
okay so you can see it here 35 then over 22 that will be 500 okay so if you do this you get uh 93 over 100 because we are asked to give the answer as a fraction in the simplest form so this will be 93 over 100 so you have 93 over 100 then 5e another uh 320 cars cross the bridge how many of these 320 cars are expected to be white okay so we need to firstly find the probability that it is white so probability that it will be white should be equal to number of white that's 175 over 500 that's over total so this will give us 0 0.35 okay so the for the uh 320 cars that are um, crossing the bridge now okay so the number of expected cars to be white will be the probability of white which is 0 0.35 multiplied by what by 320 and that will give us 112 so 112 cars are expected to be white so let's go to uh, the next one that will be part f Heidi also records the number of people in each car crossing the bridge for one hour so calculate the mean so what you need to do here is to uh, this is the frequency f okay and this is the number of people so we can take this to be x okay so we need to find the product of f and x that will be fx so that will be 20 times 1 you have 26 times 2 so you have 12 of course this one will be 0 so 4 times 15 will be 60 5 times 8 40 6 times 12 72 so the total will be 204 so uh the total frequency will be um uh, let's add this together I think uh, 20 add 6 add 15 add 8 add 12 okay so this should give you uh 61 okay so now we can easily get the mean so the mean denoted by x bar equals to the summation of fx over summation of the frequency f so this will be 204 divided by 61 and the mean will be equals to 3.34 that will be 3.34 so let's go to the next question that will be part uh question 6a simplify this this and this add up to 5a 5a subtract 3a that will give you 2a simplify this you have to do multiplication first by following the rule of board mass that will be 8b minus 28b and that will be negative 20b at c the perimeter of this shape is equal to a uh, perimeter of a square find an expression for the length of one side of the square give your answer in its simplest form so we know that the perimeter of a square will be the addition of the four sides and each side is uh, L, okay, as they are equal. So that means the perimeter of a square will be 4L and is equal to the perimeter of this shape. That means we have to add uh, these sides together. So that will be uh, 4X plus 3 add x plus 7 add 9x plus 8 add 7x plus 3 add 3x minus 9 so that will give you 4l to be equals to if you add 4x to 1x to 9x to 7x to 3x that will give you 24x uh, to be 24x then if you add 3 to uh, 7 to 8 to 3 to negative 9, so that should give you uh, plus 12, okay? So you can 
reduce this okay by dividing through by four as four can go okay so divide by four divide by four divide by four so this will give you l to be equals to x plus uh, three so sorry this will be 6x so 4 goes in 4 once 4 goes in 24 6 times so you have the length to be equals to 6x plus 3 so that is the answer to that so we have l to be equals to 6x plus 3 so let's go to the next one that will be uh, question 6 uh, d i think yes Victoria buys five cups of tea and four cakes for $15.69. Isabella buys three cups of tea and seven cakes for $17.97. Write down a pair of simultaneous equations and solve them to find the cost of one cup of tea and one cost uh, and the cost of one cake. So you must show all your working. Okay, so let's the T be T and then our uh, cake be C. So that means we're going to have 5T for the first one plus 4C to be equals to 15.69. You can call this equation 1. And for the second one, 3T plus 7C will be equals to 17.69. 9, 7, you can call this equation 2. So I want to use elimination method and the condition is that the coefficient of either T or C, okay, must be uh, equal in the two equations. So for that, I want to balance the coefficient of T. So what I'll do is that I'll multiply equation 1 by this 3 here, okay, and I'll multiply equation 2 by the five here so that will make them have the same coefficient so if i expand equation one you should have 15 c then plus 12 c to be equals to 47.07 you may want to call this equation three okay so let's expand equation two that will also give us 15 c Okay, then plus 35C to be equals to 89.85 and you can call this equation 4 as well. So we can now subtract equation 4 from uh, 3. So if you put minus here, minus here, minus here, minus here, okay. So we still have the same thing as minus times minus uh, gives plus. So we still have the same uh equation for here if you expand by this negative sign and why did i put negative sign here because it is the negative sign that will make uh these two times to be zero so this will be zero so i may not write it here then here you have 12c minus plus uh, 35c okay c is missing here so this will give you minus uh 23c okay to be equals to uh, this minus this you get minus 42.78 so you need to divide both sides by negative 23 so if you do this the value of c will be equals to 1.86 okay so that is for the cake and from there you can easily find uh, from equation 1 where you have 5t plus 4c equals to 15. Uh, six nine so let's write that so five t plus four c equals to fifteen okay point six nine that's equation one so let's um key in the value of c so that will be five t plus four into one point eight six to be equals to fifteen point six nine and that will give us five t so plus um, 7.44 to be equals to 15.69. You need to collect like times. So you have 5t to be equals to 15.69 minus 7.44. And the value of, uh, so you have 5t to be equals to 8.25. 
finally divide both sides by 5 so you have t2 equals to 8.25 divided by 5 and the value of t equals to 1.65 so you have 1.65 and 1.86 respectively so let's go to the next uh, question that would be question 7 elise lily and marco start a business elise invests five thousand dollars lily invests eight thousand dollars marco invests three thousand dollars after one year they make a profit of forty thousand dollars they share this profit in the ratio of their investments work out how much they each receive okay so we can say elise is e elise is e then Lily is L and Marco is M. Okay, so this will be their ratio. Since they are all in thousands, so we can divide through by 1000. So Elise will be 5, Lily will be 8, and Marco will be 3. So the total ratio will be 5 add 8 add 3. That will be 16. Then we need to get uh, how many lots of uh, 16 are there in 40,000. That will be 40,000 divided by 16, and that will give you um, 2,500. So that means we need to multiply each of these by 2,500. So if we do that, um, Elise E will be equals to 5 times 2,500. So this will be 12,500 for Elise. So for Lily L to be equals to 8 multiplied by 2500. So that will give you 20,000. And lastly, Marco will be 3 times 2500. So that will give you 7500 respectively. So we can put 12,500 for Elise and then 20,000 for uh, Lily and then 7,500 for Marco. So let's go to part B, Roman figure one. Lily buys 20 rows of ribbon. Eight are red, six are blue, and four are yellow. Uh, four are yellow and two are pink. A roll of ribbon is chosen at random. On the probability scale, draw an arrow to show the probability that this row is a yellow so to get the probability that it is a yellow it should be number of yellow over 2 2 okay so for this one it will be equals to 4 a yellow okay over the total which is 20 so if you convert this to okay this will be 1 out of 5 which is the same as 0 0.2 0 0.2 will be here so you can draw an arrow like this so this will be 0 0.2 for yellow then not red it will be equals to uh, 1 minus probability that it is red and that will be equals to 1 minus uh, number of red is 8 over total that is 20 so this will give us 0 0.6 so it will be here put the arrow here then part c green the probability of green okay is zero there is no ribbon that is green there so you put the arrow here then ribbon figure two the length l in meters of a roll of ribbon is 120 meters correct to the nearest meter complete the statement about the value of l so we need to get the lower and upper bounds of L. So to do this, it is very uh, simple. You can draw a table like this. Okay, so this would be for the upper bound and this would be for the lower bound. So the easiest way I do this is to say uh, 120 plus something for the upper bound and 120 minus something for the lower bound. So to get that something, we need the uh, degree of accuracy which is the nearest meter which is one meter okay so divided by two so that will be 0 0.5 so that something is 0 
0.5 so add 0 0.5 here um, subtract 0 0.5 here so this will give you 120.5 and this this will give you 119.5 so you have 119.5 and we have 120.5 here so let's go to the next um, question Elise buys some picture frames. The frames cost $5.80 each in New York and 4.50 euros each in Paris. The exchange rate is 1 euro to 1.37 dollar. So calculate the difference in the cost in euros. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So what you can do here we can write hero ratio dollar and we know that one euro is equivalent to 1.37 as um, given in the question okay so we want to convert 5.80 dollars to euro and that will be done by uh, dividing 5.80 by 1.37 so that will give you 4.2336 so times 4.2336 okay we'll give you this so we need to do the same thing here times 4.2336 okay so that will give us um 4.2336 let's so, subtract 4.2336 from 4.5 euros so that will be 4.50 minus 4.2336 so that will give us 0 0.27 so that will be uh the difference to two decimal places 0 0.27 let's go to part d Elise buys a framed picture. Okay, this is the framed picture. The picture is a circle with diameter 8 centimeters. That is from here, something like this, from here to this point here. Okay, that is the diameter. And uh, the frame is a square of side length 18 centimeters. So that means you have 18 here, you have 18 here. Calculate the shaded area so the area of the, we need to before we can get the area of the shaded uh portion so we need to calculate the area of the circle so we need to find the area of the square and the area of the shaded portion uh, will be equals to uh, the area of the square minus the area of the circle so let's get the area of the uh, square so the area okay of the square will be equals to um, 8 18 times 18 that is length times length so that will be equals to 324 centimeter squared so the area of um, the circle will be equals to um, pi r squared and that will be equals to uh, 3.142 multiplied by the radius will be 18 divided by 2 that is what 9 um, centimeters okay times 9 squared so if you do this to give you um, 254.50 um, okay so the area of the shaded portion will now be the area of the square that is three two four subtract um two five four point five zero and that will give you sixty nine point five zero that is sixty nine point five centimeters squared so that will be the area of the shaded portion so elise buys the framed picture for twelve point five dollars she sells the framed picture for twenty point two five dollars calculate the percentage uh, profits so the cost price is equals to 12.5 dollars and uh, the selling price is equals to 
20.25 dollars so the profit will be um 20.25 dollars minus 12.5 dollars that's the profit over the uh, cost price which is 12.5 so multiply by a hundred percent okay so if you do this you will get 7.75 over 12.5 multiplied by 100 percent and if you do this get 0 0.62 times 100 percent and finally you get 62 percent there so let's go to the next question that will be question 8 in triangle rst rt is equals to 7 centimeters and st is equals to 4 centimeters uh, using a ruler and compasses only construct triangle rst leave in your construction axe the line rs has been drawn for you so rs is this so we need to draw um, the length 7 centimeters. So we are using compasses and a ruler. So let's get the uh, ruler and the compasses. Okay, a pair of compasses. So the next thing we need to do is to measure uh, 7 centimeters for RT. We put the tip here. Then extend this to 7 centimeters. So a little bit here, okay. So this is good. So we need to draw an arc here. Bring this here. So we want to get RT. So R will be uh, the center will be at point R, okay. Then we need to draw an arc that will be seven centimeters, okay. So we can draw something like this. Let's shift this a little bit down. Okay, so we can draw something like this. So for our R, okay, then uh, for ST, uh, ST is 4 centimeters. So we need to measure 4 centimeters by using the a pair of compasses again. So center at 0. Okay, adjust very well. Good. Then let's reduce this to 4 centimeters. So I think I can uh, lower this. So let's do this. I want to see the okay. You can drag this down a little bit. So this down a little bit. So this should be here. Okay, at zero. Then let's draw this down a little bit. Okay. So should extend this a little bit. Okay. Perfect. So this will be uh, four uh, centimeters. So the center at point x like this okay so we can easily uh, do this now so let's change this so i can easily do this so let's draw an arc okay to be somewhere around here okay so this is where uh the meet so i can easily join these two points together this will be r to so this point here good and i can join this one from here as well to this point here okay so this will be point uh, t so we know that the value of rt is seven centimeters and the value of st is four centimeters okay so that is how to construct that so measure the distance from s to the midpoint of rt so from s to the midpoint of rt so we need to firstly uh bisect uh this rt okay so let's draw the perpendicular bisector of rt so put the center here and tap this like this so let's raise this a little bit up let it be more than half of rt you extend this a little bit Okay, so let's draw an arc up and down. Okay, so an arc up here. Okay, so let's draw the same arc down here. So something like this. Okay, then uh, the same thing with the same radius center at T here. Okay, 
so let's have this like this so let's bisect this this should meet this okay and this should come down here so let's draw this arc here okay good so that means the midpoint will be here so let's join these two arcs together from here now something like this here okay so this is the midpoint of rt so we can about this this is the midpoint okay so we want to measure from this point to point s so we have to measure the distance from s to the what to the midpoint of rt so i can draw a line here from here to here that is the distance i want to get so let's place in the let's place the ruler so it will be this and we can adjust this a little bit let's reduce this a little bit so then we can rotate this so we can put this now so this will be zero okay and let's shift this up a little bit okay so the distance will be um about 6.8 centimeters so we have 6.8 centimeters but we are also give our answer in uh millimeters so to get to leave your answer in millimeters so you multiply by uh 10 okay from uh king henry died by uh drinking chocolate milk okay so this is centimeters and this is uh, millimeters so from centimeters to millimeters you shift the decimal point to the front ones so this would be like this Okay, and this will be 68 centi uh, 68 millimeters okay that is the answer here but uh there is an error here because uh on the actual paper if you do this so your answer should be 5.2 centimeters and two millimeters it will be 52 uh, millimeters okay but i got uh 6.8 centimeters because when i uploaded this paper into this uh application where um, i'm solving the problem at the paper rather okay so it magnifies the what the, the the page so it becomes larger so that is why i got uh this to be 6.8 uh centimeters okay so that is the error okay so but if you do it uh, practice it on the actual paper you should get the uh, length to be uh, 52 millimeters so that is the reason i have uh, 68 millimeters but the actual answer should be um, 52 millimeters or thereabouts okay so part b uh, town a is 8.5 centimeters from town b on a map okay so the scale of the map is one uh, ratio 50,000 so that means we are going to have um, centimeters ratio uh, the actual reading you can say a to denote the actual reading so you have 1 to uh, 50,000 um, okay so time a is now 8.5 centimeters okay so uh, we want to calculate the actual distance okay from town a to town b so it will be 8.5 here so what we need to do is to say what was done to 1 to become 8.5 actually it was multiplied by 8.5 so we need to do the same thing here that is um, times 8.5 so if you do uh, this it will give us uh, 425 zero 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 that is four hundred and twenty five thousand uh centimeters okay but we are asked to give our answer in kilometers so we need to convert four thousand uh, four hundred and twenty five thousand centimeters to kilometers okay so using uh king henry uh died by drinking chocolate milk so centimeters to kilometers that means you have to move from here one two three four five times so if you see the uh the answer we got here is uh 
425000. So from here, we need to move five times backward. One, two, three, four, and five. So it will be 4.25 uh, kilometers. So that will be the required answer. So we have 4.25 kilometers. So let's go to the next question. That will be uh, part C. The diagram shows triangle BCE and a straight line ABCD. BE is equals to CE and angle DCE is equals to 118 degrees. Find the value of X. Okay. Um, ECB. Okay. ECB. This angle here will be equals to, let's say, E. CB will be equals to 180 minus 118 because there are angles on a straight line and this will give us 62 degrees. So if you have 62 degrees here, automatically you have 62 degrees here because there are base angles of an isosceles triangle. So we cannot get the value of X by saying X add 62 add 62 should be equals to 180 degrees because Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So these two add up to 124. So you have X plus 124 equals to 180. And X equals to 180 minus 124. And the value of X equals to 56 uh, degrees. So let's go to part D. The diagram shows a right angle triangle ABC show that BC is equal to 7.5 centimeters correct to two significant figures. Okay, so using uh, Pythagoras theorem, you can denote this by, let's say, uh, X, or oh, you just leave it as BC. So the square on the hypotenuse, that will be uh, AB squared equals to uh, sum of the squares on the other two sides to be um a c squared plus b c squared so if, if you can the given values you have 8.9 squared to be equals to 4.8 uh, squared then plus b c squared so you can have 8.9 squared minus 4.8 squared equals to b c squared and you can take a uh, square root of both sides so we're going to have square root of 8.9 squared minus 4.8 squared to be equals to BC and if you input this into your calculator you should get the answer to be uh, BC to be approximately um, 7.5 centimeters to uh, two significant uh, figures so let's go to the next question that will be question 9 triangles a, B, and C are shown on the grid. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. So this is triangle A. This is triangle B. So um, it's better to label the shape. So I can label this as P, Q, and R. So of course, if you um, rotate this, um, clockwisely okay so you see that this should be r the image of r should be here that is r prime and then um, p prime should be here and then q uh, prime should be here so that means we have uh, rotation as the transformation then we need to get the center the direction is also um, clockwise and you need to get the uh, the angle okay so the first thing we need to do is to get the center of um, rotation and we can do that by joining two corresponding points together and bisect the line so we have P and P prime like this so we can also have R and uh, R prime or Q and uh, Q prime so you can join these two so if you like you can uh, connect the three uh, points together and bisect them and uh, if you like you can just connect just only two corresponding points 
and bisect them together so that will be okay so for me i've draw off joint uh p and p prime q and q prime so i'll bisect the two lines so where the two uh the, the bisect of these two uh lines meet will be the center of rotation so i'll do that and show you the answer the red line is the perpendicular bisector of p uh and p prime and then this green line is the perpendicular bisector of q and uh, q prime so they both meet at the origin so that means the center of rotation is at the origin okay so the next thing we need to do is to get the um, angle okay so to get the angle you need to draw a line from the object let's say uh, point r so to the center of rotation here and draw uh, the other line to the corresponding um, image of that r which is um, r prime prime here so you draw something like this okay so it is obvious that you have 90 degrees here but if you still want to check so you can take your protractor okay and set uh, the, the center of the protractor should be at the center of rotation okay and you can confirm that so let's take this the center is here then let's set the line okay it should be on zero okay so if you look at it this is 90 so here is 90 here this particular point here is 90 degrees so this is how you can get the uh your answer so i will say this is rotation okay so uh, i'll say that's the name of the transformation then the center should be 0 comma 0 or you can write the origin and then it is uh, 90 degrees clockwise so part b describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle a to c a to c so if this is p this would be p prime prime if this is r this would be r prime prime this is q this would be q prime prime so you can see that it is um, enlargement as it becomes um, bigger okay so let's see what is the scale factor let's count let's take corresponding sides that is side pq and then pre prime prime q prime prime okay so this would be one two three then you have uh let's see what you have one two three four and half that is four point uh five so that means if you have three if you do three multiply by what okay uh will give you 4.5 so this will be the scale factor so that means uh the scale factor will be equals to 4.5 divided by three that will be equals to 1.5 so the name of the transformation is enlargement the scale factor is um 1.5 so we need to get the center of enlargement so to get the center of enlargement so we have to connect uh, a corresponding point a point from the object to the corresponding uh, point okay of the image so that is we can easily draw a line to join r and then r prime prime like this so we connect like this r and r prime prime and just draw this then p and p prime prime you can have something like this p and p prime prime you can extend this so let's roll up a little bit okay then oh i should have extended this longer okay no problem let's take q and q prime prime so it will be this one here so let's extend q and q prime prime Okay, you have this so let's roll up a little bit so i'll need to extend these lines here 
so this will be for p and p prime prime so we just have to take it uh like this down a little bit okay and for this two we can extend it for r and r prime prime so we just extend it like this okay so you see that this is uh where the three lines meet so they meet here okay that is x equals to minus one and y equals to minus seven that is the center of enlargement okay so i can come here i can write um enlargement here enlargement okay so uh scale factor scale factor 1.5 then center x equals to minus one y equals to minus seven okay so part c on the grid translate triangle a by vector six minus four okay we want to translate triangle a so this is triangle a here and then the uh by x equals to six and y equals to minus four so we'll count six to the forward and then four downward okay so for point p uh it will be one two three four then um four downward one sorry for x it will be six let's count again one two three four five six then four downward as y equals to negative four one two three four so this will be point p let's say okay p prime 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 okay so let's remove this okay so for q the same thing you have one so if you if you are very conversant with it you can just measure the distance from here like one two three and just do one two three here yeah, to save time so that means q prime 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 will be here but you can confirm that let's go one two three four five six then four downward one two three four okay that's correct and for this one you can also count the uh gap between them this is one two so from here you just have one two so that means the r uh prime 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 should be here you can also confirm that again one two three four five six one two three four so we need to uh, connect them together so you have this you have this and you have this so this will be the image okay so that has been done on the grid reflect triangle a equals uh, on the grid reflect triangle a in the line y equals to negative two okay so let's draw the line y equals to negative two this will be the mirror line or line of our reflection okay so we want to reflect triangle a so this is triangle a so what we need to do for this we'll count let's start with point r so from r to the mirror line you have one so you count one here so you have a point here so this will be r so prime 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 and for point p you have one two three so let's count one two three so this will be p prime 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 of course you can easily count the distance between them one two so it will be one two four point q let's count one two three then let's count three one two three so it should be here so the points will be here so that will be q prime 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 so of course we can easily count the distance between uh p and q so this is p here then automatically q will be here so this is one two three so this will be one two three so let's connect them together this and this this and this and finally this and this 
okay so this is the reflection so this will be the end of this video so watch out for the uh, last uh, variant for paper three that will be um, three three until then stay calm and enjoy yourself see you later